So we, we have these this downgrade to estimates from the World Bank. It seems the IMF could come forward with similar uh, similar downgrades. We're talking about double dip recessions in various parts of the world that we that we weren't previously, and yet we have stocks near all time highs. Does that seem bubbly to you? We actually think equity markets do have further to rise, so we're overweight. Um, I think a lot of the stuff we're seeing is short-term disruption um, for this year. I think markets are looking through to seeing that we have plans in place for vaccine rollouts. There isn't any evidence that the vaccines won't be effective in some of these variants or that they can't be adapted for it. So I think when you get this news, it says, okay, maybe we push out reopening by a, few, a month or a few months. But ultimately, we, the markets see a path to go through it, and that's why we still see quite a lot of good momentum in, in shares. Um, in terms of momentum, how much longer can this continue uh, on markets, Shanti? I mean, it seems today six out of the top ten most read stories on the Bloomberg terminal are about one asset or all assets being in bubbles. And... Everyone we talk to, Mark Cudmore included, seems to say, like, yeah, we know we're in a bubble, but we're going to keep partying until it pops. Is that um, a safe strategy? So valuations are high largely because we have very low interest rates, and that makes any cash flows that you're receiving from bonds or from companies more valuable than they were a year or two ago. We think that interest rates are going to stay low indefinitely. We don't see any scope for interest rate rises before 2023. That's supportive of asset valuations. We also think governments will be likely to more likely to overstimulate rather than understimulate. We've seen that with what Bi President Joe Biden has proposed, what Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has proposed as well. So while asset valuations are high, it just reflects our current low interest rate environment and the fact we're likely to have stimulus and spending and low rates for a long time. And, and another sector that, uh, that you might find assets that are fairly richly priced by historic metrics, Chancy, might be commodities. Uh, and certain commodities have done very well through the recovery, of course. How do you divide up the commodities world? Where are you looking for assets that will continue to deliver for you? Uh, green infrastructure, of course, very much part of the political narrative. How does that tie in? So we've moved to being more neutral on gold recently because we think it, we think the economy is in the early cycle and gold tends to not perform very well. So that's where we are in that asset class. We have seen a lot of money go into commodities recently as part of that trend toward assets that are a bit more geared towards growth and inflation. We do have some holdings in our direct equities that are more linked to, say, copper. We, we own some shares that have exposure to, to other mining sectors. We think that growth in China will continue to support the commodity sector. And then we also do see potential for more spending on, on infrastructure. So things, it's always something that's talked about every U.S. presidential cycle, never really happens. But perhaps there is a bit more momentum for things like, you know, creating green infrastructure. I think there is desire to do that in the U.K. and in the U.S. as well.